Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to historic Pearl Harbor and the commissioning of United States ship John Finn. I'm Commander Courtney Minitry, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS John Finn. The ship before you was christened in Pascagoula, Mississippi on May 2nd, 2015. Notably, she was delivered to the Navy on the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 2016. Today, she is complete, and this crew is proud to serve on the newest destroyer in the United States Navy. Our crew is dedicated to carrying out the courageous legacy handed down to us by her namesake, the warrior of Kaneohe, Lieutenant John Finn. To quote then Chief... <laughs> to quote then Chief Aviation Ordnanceman John Finn's Medal of Honor citation, he promptly secured a man a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on an instruction stand and a completely exposed section of the parking ramp which was under heavy enemy machine gun strafing fire. Although painfully wounded many times, he continued to man this gun and to return the enemy's fire vigorously and with telling effect throughout the enemy strafing and bombing attacks without complete disregard for his own personal safety. In that same spirit, this ship will sail the oceans, often alone, and will stand vigilant against those who would threaten democracy and freedom. This crew is honored to serve in the ship which bears his name. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hull to fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, the United States Pacific Fleet Band will render honors to Admiral Harry Harris. Ship's company, up 10, put. Would the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, presentation of colors, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Lieutenant Commander Alan Fleming, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Commander Scott Williams, United States Navy, DDG 51 Class Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Captain Joe Ring, United States Navy, Deputy Commander, Destroyer Squadron 3-1. Captain William Kearns, United States Navy, retired. Chairman, USS John Finn, Commissioning Committee. Captain Casey Moten, United States Navy, DDG 51, Class Program Manager. Rear Admiral Brad Hicks, United States Navy, retired. Vice President, Lockheed Martin, Rotary and Mission Systems. Mr. Joe Finn, son of Lieutenant John Finn. Mr. Brian Cusius, Executive Vice President and President, Ingalls Shipbuilding. Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. The Honorable Ikaika Anderson, Councilman, District 3, Honolulu City Council. Mr. Thomas D., performing the duties of Undersecretary of the Navy. Admiral Scott Swift, United States Navy, Commander, United States Pacific Fleet.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Laura Elizabeth Stavridis, our ship's sponsor, is escorted today by Command Master Chief Thomas Conway. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Harry Harris, United States Navy, Commander, United States Pacific Command, is escorted today by Commander Michael Wagner, United States Navy, John Finn's prospective commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Harry Harris, platform, hand, salute. <laughs> Fleming will deliver the invocation. Good morning. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the gift of life. And we are humbled by the beauty and the majesty of your creation, which surrounds us here today. And God, we're also humbled by the example of courage, tenacity, and devotion to duty displayed in the actions of John Finn, on December 7, 1941, and indeed throughout his long and meaningful life. God, it is my prayer that the men and women who breathe life into this mighty warship will be inspired by the life and service of John Finn. Through power and determination, let this ship and its crew ever be an instrument of peace. May there be no foe who can resist their might as they do the righteous bidding of our nation. 
Let them be proud of who they are as the crew of the USS John Finn, and may their love of country strengthen their devotion to duty, however arduous that may be. Father, we are honored to invoke your presence for this special occasion. May your presence forever keep this ship and all who hold it dear. And now, God, I ask this in the name of our Creator. Amen. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company Parade Rest. Ladies and gentlemen, Councilman Ikaika Anderson, 3rd District, Honolulu City Council. Aloha kakahi kako. Good morning. It is a great privilege and honor to join all of you here today, representing not just the people of Windward Oahu, but all of the people that comprise the city and county of Honolulu on this day to celebrate the commissioning of the USS John Finn. I know that we can all agree that there is no pro more appropriate venue to honor the man behind this ship's namesake than here at Pearl Harbor. For many of us who grew up here in Hawaii and long before the era of the internet, we would often hear stories some boarding on incredulity about December 7th, 1941, when lives and history were forever changed. There was a story of the submarine that was captured off of Bellows Beach, which is roughly a mile from my house. The wayward enemy pilot that was caught on the privately owned Hawaiian island of Ni'ihau, and the young man who took on a squadron of enemy planes with only a machine gun. Knowing the real history behind many of these childhood stories, we can appreciate and show the proper respect for the events that took place and the individuals involved. In particular, being here to memorialize that brave young man, John Finn. A self-described career Navy man whose actions and unflinching willingness to put his duty to his country and fellow man above that of his own security embodied the very definition of an American hero. Prior to preparing for this morning, I knew of John Finn as one of Nakoa o Kaneohe, or the warriors of Kaneohe, depicted in a painting manning a machine gun as he defended Kaneohe Bay while Japanese planes fired at him from above on December 7th. I later learned that Lieutenant Finn was the uncle of my good friend, Lieutenant Caleb Nation, himself a career Navy man, and that Mr. Finn had earned the Medal of Honor. I watched a video interview of Lieutenant Finn in which he shares the events of that December 7th morning, when his otherwise leisurely Sunday was broken by the sound of low-flying aircraft. Continuing on, he notes his first concern once he realized the planes were enemy fighters, was that someone had taken his job, manning the machine guns. That was his job, and by God, he was not going to let someone else do it. Such a brief and matter-of-fact way in which John Finn describes his actions as an aviation chief ordinanceman that earned him our nation's highest award speaks volumes about his character and his nature. The commissioning of the USS John Finn is a fitting tribute to one of our Koa o Kaneohe. May she embark on a long career protecting our nation and defending liberty and freedom on this earth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Cusius, Executive Vice President and President, Ingalls Shipbuilding. Well, thank you, distinguished guests, my fellow shipbuilders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Well, I'm honored to be here today in Pearl Harbor, representing the thousands of hardworking men and women who built John Finn, and 28 of her sister, Arlie Burke class destroyers that preceded her into the fleet. As I look upon John Finn, I marvel at what a phenomenal asset this ship is to our nation and to the United States Navy, truly one of the most powerful advanced warships in the world. It is also a privilege to be part of bringing this great ship to life 
to serve our country and to honor the namesake. The ship we commissioned today honors Navy Lieutenant John Finn, who received the Medal of Honor for his historic actions on December 7, 1941, during the attack on Pearl Harbor. The first Medal of Honor recipient in World War II, Finn retired after 30 years in the Navy and lived to 100 years old. It's with great gratitude and respect that we honor him today with the commissioning of this ship. We'd like to think that there's a little John Finn spirit and devotion in every one of our shipbuilders who put their hearts and souls into every ship we build. And DDG 113 is no exception. Thousands of dedicated shipbuilders, riggers and fitters, welders, engineers, planners, and many others pour tens of thousands of hours transforming raw steel and equipment into the ship our Navy commissions today. Our mission at Ingalls is clear. Build the best ships, period. For the Marine Corps, for the Navy, and for the Coast Guard, I would say for America. Our shipbuilders are indeed a national asset who support the defense of our nation and freedom across the globe. Our national heroes, the men and women who will sail on this great ship in protection of our country and our freedom, have earned and deserve nothing less than America's best. Several of these outstanding shipbuilders are with us today. I would ask that the English shipbuilders who are here today please stand and be recognized. Thank you, shipbuilders. Commander Wagner, you and your team may know us as the builders of your ship, but you should also know that we're among your biggest supporters and we deeply appreciate your sacrifice and your service to our country. On behalf of 12,000 employees at Ingalls, congratulations to Commander Wagner, his officer and his crew members. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you today for this historic event. May God bless America, this ship, and all who serve in her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cusius. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Thank you, XO. Admiral Mrs. Stravitas, Admiral Greenert, Admiral Harris, Admiral Swift, Secretary D, fellow Flag and General Officers, Captain Wagner and the crew, of the soon-to-be USS John Finn. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Captain Kearns, just another special shout out to you and your commissioning team. What a fantastic week. And I thank you for making this week special, not only for all of us, but especially for the ship's company. Thanks very much. I'd also like to acknowledge I'd also like to acknowledge the extraordinary hospitality of the people of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And we're fortunate today to have Councilman Anderson with us. You have supported our Navy so well in so many ways over the years, but the support really shines brightly in events like this. Thank you very much. And finally, a very special mahalo to Commander John Matrus, Chief Ray Emery, and the families of the Pearl Harbor survivors who are with us here today, honoring our namesake and their shipmate, John Finn. We are honored by your presence and profoundly inspired by your example. Thank you. Thanks. It is great to be back to delivering DDG-51 class ships to the fleet. The last DDG-51 class ship delivered was the Michael Murphy, home ported here in Pearl Harbor and tied up not far from here at Bravo Piers. She was commissioned in October 2012, just under five years ago. And I'll tell you folks, there are more of these ships to come. Arguably, our most successful surface ship construction program, John Finn is the 63rd of 64 delivered DDG-51 class ships to the Navy with eight more in construction and even more under contract. It was over eight years ago when the Navy restarted the DDG-51 production line. Today, 
as the Navy's Program Executive Officer for Ships, I am privileged and very humbled to represent the thousands of men and women, a collective Navy industry team that has labored tirelessly to deliver on that commitment. The restart of these destroyers, with John Finn being the very first, are the first Aegis destroyers to be constructed with the integrated air missile defense radar, providing that much needed ballistic missile defense capability to the fleet. The much improved combat capability of John Finn makes this ship, hands down, the most capable warship in the world. And we are on a path right now to further upgrade the combat capability of this ship class, working with industry today on the next generation of the Arleigh Burke destroyers. The sustained success of this program is a living testament to the vision, the perseverance, and the leadership of Rear Admiral Wayne E. Meyer, the father of Aegis. Anna Mae, thank you for your presence here today. It means so much to all of us. Thank you for being here. This morning, through one of our most time-honored traditions of the United States Naval Service, we come together to welcome our newest destroyer, the soon-to-be USS John Finn, into the world's greatest Navy. In doing so, I'd like to take just a moment as we gather here in the shadow of DDG-113 and the USS Arizona Memorial to remember and acknowledge the people whose unique relationship has brought us to this point in time and to reflect upon the values, our values, that we share. For this ship bears a name that is synonymous with extraordinary heroism, distinguished service, and devotion above and beyond the call of duty. And this was clearly displayed on that Sunday in December of 1941. Our ship's namesake, Lieutenant John Finn, a sailor's sailor, who not only through his actions on that fateful December day, but more importantly, the way he lived his life, personified our Navy's time-honored values, our values of honor, courage, and commitment. The honor of his actions, combined with a mental and physical courage to stand down an enemy against insurmountable odds, his profound commitment, especially his commitment to his sailors, a lesson he instilled in the men that he led and inspired throughout his life of service. These values are part of Lieutenant John Finn's legacy and provide an example for all of us to emulate. Then there's the phenomenal team that designed and built this ship. It is their work that has been so critical to the success that we celebrate today. It is a team that collectively exhibits those same values of honor, courage, and commitment turning loads of steel plates and electronic components into the magnificent warship we have today. It is my distinct honor to recognize this team and acknowledge just a few key members. From the Navy, my executive director, Ms. Billiana Anderson, the ship's program manager, Captain Casey Moten, and his superb staff, including his production team led by Commander Dave Murray and Greg Pearson. The Navy team, working shoulder to shoulder with the shipbuilder on the waterfront, is the supervisor of shipbuilding Gulf Coast, led by Captain Brian Lawrence, represented today by his waterfront production team, Commander Scott Williams, and his deputy, Steve Lee, and their production team, Lieutenant Commander Brennan Blanchfield, and Senior Chief Tim Merrill. Folks, thanks for a job well done. I also want to quickly acknowledge our industry partners. From Ingalls Shipbuilding, led by Brian Kushis, Kerry Wilkerson, and George Nungesser, and Lockheed Martin, Brad Hicks, these individuals represent the thousands of men and women in the shipyard in Pascagoula and across our system and equipment suppliers, literally across the country, who have worked tirelessly over the past four years to bring this great ship to life, ensuring that she is built with the strength, the power, 
and the warfighting cap capabilities that will outmatch any adversary. Like the ship's namesake, this tremendous team has shown us the superb deeds that can be accomplished through unity of purpose and an abiding commitment to execution excellence, honor, courage, and commitment. I could not be more proud of their contributions for the superb ship that they have built for our Navy. Well done, folks. To our ship's sponsor, Ms. Laura Stravitas, thank you for your lifetime of selfless service. As a Navy wife, a mother, a teacher, a life of service that continues here today. As the sponsor of this great warship, through your unique contributions, you have imbued this ship with your spirit, the spirit of a true American, a true American patriot, with honor, courage, and commitment. Your example will guide and inspire her over calm waters and tumultuous seas throughout her service length. Laura, many, many thanks. Thank you. And today, most importantly, to the crew. Captain Wagner, you and your crew stand ready to command control over the seas and project American power in defense of freedom and liberty worldwide. This team has built you a great ship. Mrs. Stravitas has instilled her with an indomitable and gracious spirit. You and your crew must now bring the courage, the warfighting expertise, and the culture of excellence that will turn this ship into the most capable weapon systems in the world. I know you have worked tirelessly to form not only a crew, but a true team, a band of brothers and sisters. As you prepare to meet the unknown challenges ahead, please know that you sail forward with the hopes and prayers of a grateful nation. You are ready and you will make a difference. John Finn, stand and fight with honor, courage, and commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Galinas. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thomas D., performing the duties of Undersecretary of the Navy. Councilman Anderson, thank you for hosting us and all the people of the state of Hawaii and this beautiful island in the Pacific. What better place for, to celebrate this commissioning than right here? Admiral Harris, Admiral Swift, Mrs. Stavridis, and Admiral Stavridis. And to the many admirals, uh, general officers, senior civilians here with us today, Mr. Joe Finn, and all of the family and friends of Chief Aviation Ordnanceman John Finn, and to the many distinguished guests from our Navy, from industry, from the historic and hallowed port of Pearl Harbor, and to the crew of our Navy's newest warship, the USS John Finn. I'm honored to be here representing the Secretary of the Navy as we celebrate the christening of our 63rd Arleigh Burke class destroyer. The ship before you will sail the world's oceans, protecting and defending America's national interests with the latest version of the world's most advanced weapons system. Let me echo Admiral Galinas, Anna May, the nation will forever be indebted to your husband, Admiral Wayne Meyer, the father of the Aegis weapon system, for the innovation, the discipline, and the leadership he applied to enable the tremendous warfighting capability that you see before us today. Thank you very much for being here. Mr. Kuchius, as I gaze upon this morning, as I gaze this morning upon this marvel of naval engineering and reflect on the contributions of the 62 Arleigh Burke destroyers already delivered and in commission, I congratulate you the employees of Ingalls Shipbuilding, your partners at Lockheed Martin, Admiral Hicks, and your many suppliers and the entire U.S. shipbuilding ind industrial base for your world-class craftsmanship and engineering expertise. And I also salute you for fostering this critical industry within America. What could be more motivating to the nation's aspiring naval architects, engineers, logisticians, technicians, and management students been an opportunity to contribute to such a powerful product and symbol 
of American ingenuity and engineering. Thank you and your superb team of shipbuilders in partnership with our acquisition team led by Admiral Galinas and our program manager, Captain Casey Mooton, for a job well done. I'm inspired by the heroism of this ship's namesake, John Finn, leaving his home in Kaneohe at the sound of gunfire and heading into the fight, taking charge of his men and exposing himself to waves of enemy fire while heroically manning his guns to repel the relentless Japanese attacks, taking 21 bullet and fragmentation wounds in the course of the battle, but not seeking medical attention until the fight was over. And upon being awarded the Medal of Honor, claiming he had done nothing compared with the heroism displayed by others. Heroism is not listed as a core attribute of the Navy, but John Finn clearly displayed integrity, accountability, initiative, and toughness that morning 75 years ago. Captain Mike Wagner, skipper, you will soon take command of the newest ship in the commission of the U.S. Navy. Crewed by our nation's best, blessed with the technical capabilities delivered by our industry partners and acquisition professionals, with the grace and support of our distinguished sponsor, Mrs. Laura Stavridis, and with the fighting spirit of Chief Aviation Ordnanceman John William Finn, you and your crew will operate these 9,200 tons of sovereign U.S. territory far from home, and when needed, you will steam towards the sound of gunfire with all of the integrity, accountability, initiative, and toughness that inspires our Navy and leads to heroic outcomes. To all in the audience, to the many, many stakeholders who could not be here today, to all of our sailors and Marines and our veterans around the world, thank you for your commitment and your partnership. I'm very proud to call you all shipmates. Godspeed, USS John Finn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. D. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Scott Swift, United States Navy, Commander, United States Pacific Fleet. Thanks, XO. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, aloha. Uh, uh, honored guests, fellow flag and general officers, and especially the family and friends of John Finn. It's an honor and pleasure to join you here this morning to welcome the Navy's newest guided missile destroyer to the United States Pacific Fleet. My role here today is to introduce my boss, which is an easy task, one of the easier tasks I've had over the last week, because he truly is a man who needs no introduction. So I find myself standing before you with nothing to do. Never being one to let time go wasted, I'd like to quickly highlight why this commissioning is so important to me as the Pacific Fleet Commander. From a professional perspective, today's commissioning resonates with me as the USS John Finn enters service here in the Indo-Asia Pacific. And we want, as we once again face challenges to the peace and security that the rules-based international system has provided for over 70 years. The impressive capabilities of John Finn brings to the fleet critical capability and reminds those that would challenge us to re, re, gives them reason to pause and reinforce America's unwavering commitment to our allies, partners, and friends in this region. This ship bears a proud name, and I have no doubt that the Pacific Fleet sailors who will sail her over the horizon will embody John Finn's example of initiative, bravery, and toughness as they, as they chart her future in defense of our nation. When war came to the windward Oahu 75 years ago, John Finn did not hesitate to take station, return fire, and lead his sailors in the fight despite his own extensive wounds. His courage that morning inspires present and future sailors and embodies a heritage of excellence that we are both obligated and privileged to continue and build upon through our own service. From a personal perspective, today's commissioning, res uh, commissioning resonates with me as my first commanding officer assignment was in the early 1990s as a young lieutenant commander when I was assigned to command the Strike Fighter Weapons School 
in Lemoore, California. At times, the fact that John Finn was a Medal of Honor recipient overshadows the fact that he was an ordinance man. To the ordinance men past and present, he is thought of first as one of them, and they a part of him. At the Weapons School in Lemoore, John Finn and his story was central to our mission of training and certifying both ordnance men and aviators to employ the FA-18 weapon system. We had a plaque dedicated in John's honor that still stands today at the entrance of the school, embedded in a large stone from the Sierras. We were honored to have John attend its dedication. He was personable, effusive in his praise for today's sailors, especially ordnance men, and humble in all things attributed to him, repeating over and over again that day, I did mo no more than any one of you could and would have in the same circumstances. It is a fitting testament to the enduring impact of America's World War II heroes had uh, more than seven decades ago after the attack of Pearl Harbor that we are gathered here today to honor him as a starring member of the greatest generation. Their legacy of service and sacrifice for America's security persists today as their children now lead the vanguard of defending our national values, which brings me to our speaker today. Earlier I spoke of Admiral Harris as a man who needs no introduction, certainly to this audience. But here are a few de details you may not know about him. He's the son of a Navy Chief Petty Officer who steamed aboard the USS Lexington during the Battle of Coral Sea. Surviving her sinking, he was eventually rescued at sea just a few short months after John Finn's brave actions at Kaneohe. Admiral Harris's father continued to serve with honor throughout the remainder of the war, eventually coming to serve in Japan during the post-year wars. There he met and married his wife. I am sure neither imagined in their wildest dreams that their young son from such unique origins would come to command the, the, Pacific, uh, the Pacific Command. Though Admiral Harris was inspired to join the, by the military stories of his father's experience, along with those of several of his uncles who also served, it was his mother's example of grace, humility, and sacrifice that taught him the true meaning of service. During his career as a Naval Flight Officer, Admiral Harris has logged over 400 4,400 flight hours, 400 of which uh, were conducted in combat, has held uh, numerous commands, has served in every geographic combatant command uh, throughout the world. Today, he leads our military throughout the Indo-Asia Pacific to provide the security and stability that all nations in this region have enjoyed since the end of World War II, and that his father, along with so many others, fought so hard for. His experience truly spans generations, from his father's service throughout World War II to his responsibilities for providing for the security and from that secu security the stability and from that stability the prosperity that we have enjoyed so much throughout the world since the end of World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the commander of U.S. Pacific Forces Pacific. Note to self, never follow a tall man to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for the Pacific Fleet Band and that awesome rendition of our national anthem. Thanks, Not So one can never be sure what a fighter pilot is going to say when he's in a position to introduce a P-3 and a foe. So thanks for that great introduction. And thanks for the keys to this new ship. It even has that new ship smell. So I'm honored to join Admiral Swift and our other guest speakers, Councilman Anderson, uh, Mr. Kusha, Secretary D, and Admiral Galinas to the podium. Thank you all for your inspirational remarks. And being the last speaker today, uh, I know that all the good things have already been said, and the only thing separating you all from the reception is, well, me. So I'll get on with it so we can let the festivities begin. 
But before starting, I would like to recognize the family of Lieutenant John Finn, including his son Joe, and more than 50 relatives who are here for this momentous occasion. Now, this ship definitely got a winner in having Laura Stavridis uh, as the sponsor. So I've been fortunate to know Laura and her husband, Admiral Jim Stavridis, for decades. Admiral Stavridis once wrote a book called The Accidental Admiral. But anyone who knows Laura know that she's really the reason why he was the inevitable admiral. Mr. Kosius and all our industry partners in attendance, Thank you very much for delivering such an awesome ship. Folks, American industry builds great ships, the best in the world. Consider for a moment that the last captain of this ship is yet to be born. Now that is a return on investment for the American taxpayer. State and city leaders, esteemed members of our consular and diplomatic corps, Admirals Fargo and Grocky, Captain Kearns, and everyone on the commissioning committee, thank you for crafting such a beautiful ceremony. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy, Sean Stackley, and our CNO, Admiral Richardson, bravo Zulu. Well done. Fellow flag and general officers, active and retired, and a special shout out to Admiral Greener, to Admiral Mackey, Admiral Stavridis, and General Bramlett, distinguished guests, and most importantly, Captain Mike Wagner and the crew of the about to be commissioned as soon as I start talking, the USS John Finn, welcome to Pacific Command. Ladies and, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Navy has a glorious history of naming ships after heroes in epic battles where women and men rose above themselves to join a pantheon of legends who defended our country, often giving their last full measure. Medal of Honor recipient John Finn's gallant deeds here on Oahu 75 years ago are part of that milieu. Now, I'll pause for a quick second and to say that I don't know what milieu means, but it sounds French. And if you use a French word every now and then, people think you're polished and sophisticated and they pay attention. So anyway, John Finn's milieu was Naval Air Station Kaneohe Bay just over those mountains. And as history tells us, on the morning of December 7th, 1941, then Chief Aviation Ordnanceman Finn leaped to action as wave after wave of Imperial Japanese planes attacked that airfield. Finn manned a 50 caliber machine gun and, despite being wounded over 20 times, he continued to take the fight to the enemy for over two hours until the attacks ended. Folks, there are a lot of colorful quotes from John Finn himself about his, about his experiences on that day of infamy, and I've been advised not to use any of them because I can't say four-letter words uh, in public. <laughs> Fortunately, though, I did find one repeatable sentence where he said, and quote, of course I got the hell shot out of me, but he didn't kill me, and if you ain't dead, you can still manage, unquote. Now those are the words of a chief petty officer, tough, practical, and strong as a steel in this gleaming ship behind me. Thankfully, America has always been blessed to have strong women and men who find the will, who summon the courage to endure against overwhelming odds. Patriots like John Finn, who answered the call to defend our nation in her darkest hour. As we gather today, I can't think of a more fitting place to commission this ship than right here at Pearl Harbor where well, we can honor the legacy of John Finn and all Americans from the greatest generation and reflect on the blessings and the cost of liberty. With today's commissioning, the gallantry of John Finn is rekindled, once again lighting the way to inspire men and women who serve aboard this warship to do as he did, to stand fast and fight. That's the ship's motto, status et pugno. But I prefer simply pugno Pugno, Pugno. That's Tennessee Latin for we're ready to fight, to fight, and to fight. Coincidentally, the PACOM mission statement is to be ready to fight tonight. So I predict that this ship and this crew will fit in just fine here in the Indo-Asia Pacific, a region inextricably linked to America's future security and economic prosperity. Indeed, America is a Pacific nation, a Pacific leader, and a Pacific power. It always has been and always will be. 
We believe in peace through strength, smart power backed by hard power. And this ship, hard power personified, sends a clear signal to our allies, to our friends, and to our adversaries that we will remain laser focused on the Indo-Asia Pacific because what happens here matters to the United States. That's why we're sending our best people and our best platforms to this region, like the John Fenn. This is the first new construction ship built from the keel up with the Aegis Baseline 9 weapon system. Now, I'm not much of a tech guy. I even have an analog watch. But fortunately, fortunately my outstanding aide, Lieutenant Commander Adrian Rossetti, is a destroyer driver. She explained to me that the Baseline 9 is a sine qua non of combat systems that allows this ship to simultaneously conduct air warfare, air warfare and ballistic missile defense. Adrian, sine qua non? Really? For my simple mind, that means that John Finn brings both the saber and the shield to the fight. America know how to get her done anytime and anywhere. Truly, the advanced combat systems in John Finn, coupled with the innovative spirit and the killer instinct of her amazing crew, are powerful reminders of our readiness to fight tonight. This warship is the embodiment of America's resolve to protect our homeland and defend our allies. Now, I've been accused of having an insatiable appetite for stuff. More ships, more subs, more planes, more battalions. More stuff to fight the many forces of darkness in my neighborhood. Forces like North Korea, a nation ruled with an iron fist by a reckless dictator. To that, I'll simply say guilty as charged. As long as our Commander-in-Chief and the American people have an insatiable appetite for security, then I have an insatiable appetite for the tools to underwrite that security, to deter, to dissuade, and, if necessary, to defeat and to destroy our adversaries. Make no mistake, capabilities like the magnificent machine behind me will do just that. When I visit our friends, our partners and allies around the Indo-Asia Pacific region, I'll be proud to point to this ship as yet another example that America remains as committed as ever to this vital region. In my opinion, we can't get our most advanced assets here fast enough. As North Korea's recent ICBM test demonstrates, as Chinese and Russian aggressiveness grows, as ISIS tries to gain a foothold in our region, the USS John Finn couldn't come to the Indo-Asia Pacific at a more pivotal moment in our nation's history. Folks, make no mistake about it. While this is a Navy ceremony and this is a Navy day, we now live in a world where we must learn, think, and fight jointly, and rightfully so. So today, we go back to the roots of not only America's Navy, but of our Marine Corps, our Army, and Air Force, as we take special note of what lies at the very core of the Joint Force, the continuing recognition Indeed, celebration of who we are and what we value as military leaders, the absolute nature of accountability, the science of command, and the art of leadership. Captain Wagner, yours is an awesome responsibility. I know you'll not take this duty lightly. And to the sailors who are about to bring this ship to life, I'll remind you that the United States is defined by her storied past and invigorated by her balanced future, be emboldened by the greatest generation who placed our country's interests above their self-interest. Rise to meet today's challenges to liberty and freedom, for you are the next generation upon which America's future depends. Ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a thrilling and historic day. USS John Finn is about to join the Pacific Fleet and the Joint Force. This ship and her crew are ready to sail into harm's way and assume the critical nation, the critical mission of safeguarding our nation's interests in the Indo-Asia Pacific. The ship's name is fitting for the best joint fighting force the world has ever seen exists today because of the men and women who did their duty right here on this island 75 years ago. So I'll close by reminding you that although Lieutenant John Finn and most from the greatest generation 
are no longer with us, we can still hear their duties, their stories of duty, of honor, and of courage. Their spirits walk amongst us and with us and call to us still. Today, we've answered that call with a mighty warship bearing a legendary fighting name, a tribute to their heroic actions that will never be forgotten. May God bless all of you. May God bless the sailors, present and future, who are man USS John Finn. And may God bless the United States of America, which has always been and forever shall be the home of the free and the land of the brave. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Michael Wagner. Thank you, Admiral Harris. Sir, I'd be honored if you would now place John Finn in commission. For the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship John Finn in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. Thank you, Admiral. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Jake's company, at 10, hut. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast, forecastle, and fantail as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, ma'am. The colors and commission pennant are flying over USS John Finn. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander, Naval Military Personnel Command, to Commander Michael K. Wagner, United States Navy. Subject, Buper's Order Number 2164 of 4 August 2014. When directed by reporting senior, detach in October 2014 from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit John Finn, DDG 113, as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS John Finn, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Swift, United States ship John Finn is in commission and I am in command, sir. Executive officer, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, ma'am. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while on watch is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority and a ship of the line. We are pleased to have Lieutenant John Finn's son, Mr. Joe Finn, in attendance. Mr. Finn will pass the long glass to Lieutenant Carrie Pittman from Bristol, Tennessee, our ship's navigator and the first officer of the deck. Our quarter deck is being led by Sailor of the Year, Petty Officer First Class Latisse Smith from Chicago, Illinois. The Petty Officer of the Watch is Petty Officer First Class Ashley Kanigi from Fruta, Colorado. The messenger of the watch is Petty Officer Second Class Kelly McCausland from Rivington, Wyoming. And the boatswain mate of the watch is Seaman Eric Irish from Queensbury, New York. Set the watch. On deck, section one. Ma'am, the watch is set. Very well.
Captain. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. We're delighted to have our sponsor, Mrs. Laura Stavridis, here this morning. Laura christened the ship in Pascagoula back in May of 2015. Laura, I would be honored if you'd come join me, make a few remarks, and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day in Hawaii, huh? A little hot, sorry about that, but it's a beautiful day. Um, I want to begin simply by saying thank you to the former Secretary of the Navy, uh, the Honorable Ray Mabus, for selecting me to be the ship's sponsor for USS John Finn. When Jim took command of the Arleigh Burke destroyer USS Barry just over 20 years ago, I never could have imagined I would one day have the privilege of being part of the life of another destroyer as a sponsor. This is a true honor and I'm very grateful. Like everyone here, I also want to thank the men and women who have worked so hard to bring the ship to this point in her young life. The shipyard workers of Ingalls, the technicians and contractors from various defense companies all around the U.S., the NAVC and other Navy professionals, and above all, Captain Mike Wagner and his terrific crew. Let's give a hand for them, please. As I think about the decades ahead for USS John Finn, I have to think about the future in terms of the core values of the US Navy. What we've talked about a lot today, but very important, courage, honor, and commitment. Let's begin with courage. I know you will always undertake your duties with courage. Whether Finn is posted off the dangerous coast of North Korea, defending against ballistic missiles, launching Tomahawk missiles in the turbulent Middle East, or conducting a freedom of navigation patrol in the South China Sea, escorting USS, USS merchant ships through the Straits of Hormuz under Iranian missiles, you will face danger and combat. At those times, I know you will rely on the spirit of Chief Petty Officer John Finn and think of his courage at one of the darkest moments in American history the attack on this nation almost 75 years ago. He stood and delivered, and so will you. Courage will always be at the core of USS John Finn. Next is honor. The crew will find itself many times facing the need to act with real honor, to live up to the values of our nation, liberty, democracy, freedom of speech, racial equality, gender equality, and many others. So often, those values can come under attack through thought, word, or deed. I know the crew of this magnificent warship will always act with honor in living up to the principles of our nation, conducting themselves with true civility and grace, building bridges with other nations, especially our friends and allies, wherever the ship sails. The crew of USS John Finn will be a credit to our nation, and on hundreds of port visits across the years to come, you will be fine representatives of American values as personified by your sense of personal honor. Finally, commitment matters deeply. We all know the life of a Navy destroyer is one long exercise in commitment. This ship will sail millions of sea miles over the decades to home, and the commitment of this crew and all the Finn crew members to come will be tested. You will spend many long days at sea on the deep ocean out of sight of land. You will miss birthdays, holidays, national celebrations, and thousands of wonderful events. But the reward you will receive for your commitment is immeasurable. You will be part of that long blue line of sailors who defend our nation standing on the ships of war and saying nothing that threatens my country will pass, not on my watch. Courage, honor, commitment, may they be the beating heart of USS John Finn from today, the day of her commissioning, to the distant moment when she retires from active service decades from now. Finally, let me say that as the sponsor of USS Finn, I will always know where the ship is sailing 
and will watch her voyages with enthusiasm and pride every day of her life. With that, let me now say with deep admiration for every sailor in Finn, Godspeed and open water to the newest destroyer in the fleet. Okay. All right. Officers and crew of USS John Finn, man our ship and bring her to life. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS John Finn salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy. Ship's company, ready, two. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS John Finn is manned and ready. Very well. Captain Ring, sir, USS John Finn is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well, Mike. Make your ship ready to fight tonight and take care of her fine crew. Aye, aye, sir. Admiral Harris, request permission to break your flag in USS John Finn, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Commander, United States Pacific Command. Aye, aye sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Commander, United States Pacific Command. Aye, aye, ma'am. Captain, Admiral Harris's flag is flying over USS John Finn. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Michael Wagner, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS John Finn. Yeah. 
Ship's Company Parade Rest. Good morning, Admiral Harris, Admiral Swift, Admiral Greener, Admiral Savridis, Admiral Mackey, Admiral Fargo, General Bramlett, all other flag and general officers, captains, colonels, commanders, fellow COs, friends, family, and guests. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Uh, and the, for those of you that know me, uh, I was told by my close friends to stick to the script so that I don't drop any four-letter words. Uh, so I, I'm going to do that. It's a beautiful day here in Hawaii, uh, a fitting place, a great place to recognize this ship. Uh, and we, we would characterize this in the service as a fine Navy day. Uh, very fitting that we're, we've put this ship into commission here in Pearl Harbor some 75 years after that notorious day in 1941. Uh, I also found it very appropriate that we have the USS Arizona Memorial and the USS Missouri as a backdrop for our ceremony. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I was not fortunate enough to meet John Finn in person, but from what I've learned from his family, many, many friends, is that he didn't consider himself a hero. Uh, he just thought he was a regular guy that was in the right place at the right time. Uh, to me, that says a lot about his character. I think he would have been proud to have this great capital warship named in his honor, and I can assure you that his tough Irish heritage is embedded within this ship. I'm truly honored and humbled to be standing here today, not only because I'm in command of the Navy's newest destroyer, but because I've been given the opportunity to lead some of the finest sailors I have ever met. The crew manning this ship are some of the best people our society has to offer. They come from all over the United States, some from small towns, others from big cities. They come from many different walks of life, and some even come from different countries. But make no mistake, they are all willing and enthusiastic about completing the mission, whether it be rendering, rendering humanitarian assistance or implementing national policy if called upon. For all of you parents, spouses, and significant others in the audience, you can be justifiably proud of your sailor that is manning this ship. These are men and women of action, ready to go into harm's way if required. They are smart, motivated, and dedicated to living up to this ship's motto of stand fast and fight. And I am proud to be their commanding officer. Thank you. Ship's company, a tin hut. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Fleming will now lead us in the benediction. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this ceremony today that has reminded us of the meaning of leadership and the power of a focused purpose. And God, thank you for those who have tirelessly pursued excellence in bringing the USS John Finn into being and those who have prepared this warship to fight our nation's battles. And Father, seeing that in the course of our duty, we are set in the midst of many and great dangers and that we cannot be faithful in the high trust placed in us without the help of Almighty God. Our prayers are united in seeking your blessing upon this ship and all who serve in her. Lord, we recognize it is your strength that enables us to protect others. Your providence keeps us safe. And as we go forth, help us to turn our hearts towards you. And may the days we live be for your glory and for the service of others. And it's in your mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Fleming. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And remain seated for the departure of our platform guests. Gentlemen, the USS John Finn Commissioning Committee invites you to a reception on the pier to your left, 
or you may exit now to return to your parking areas. We also invite you to take a ship's tour, which will begin in 30 minutes and will start at the aft brow to your right. Ship's tours will end at 2 p.m. for non-DOD CAC holders and 4 p.m. for DOD CAC holders. Additionally, we invite you to visit our memorabilia tent located to your left for any John Finn souvenirs you may want to purchase. We are honored by your presence today and thank you for your support of our Navy and nation. This concludes our ceremony. Ship's Company, fall out. <laughs>